many of you would walk into a car dealership and say, I'm here to buy a car and I want your very cheapest car? Well, nobody would do that, right? Because what kind of a car would you get? And yet at the same time, they will go online, they will go to a distributor, and they'll say, I want your very cheapest motor. Well, what kind of a motor are you going to get? You're going to get the very lowest quality motor, and you may be sorely disappointed when you find out that that motor is not able to do the job that you expected of it. So let's find out now how to tell the difference between a very low quality motor or a good quality that will deliver the kind of performance that you need. Let's get started. All right, we have here a very high quality motor made specifically for variable frequency drives. It's a Motor Drives International motor, and it's one horsepower. This motor has a stainless steel nameplate. Arguably, the nameplate is the most important part of the motor. How else do you know what the motor is? It gives you the voltage, the speed, the amps. This happens to be a one horsepower motor. It also gives you the service factor. A service factor tells you how much you can overload that motor. This is a 1.25 service factor motor, meaning you could actually overload this 25%. We recommend that you get at least a 1.15 service factor motor for any motor used with a variable frequency drive. Now let's turn the motor around here. This motor has been cut away so that we can see the internals of the motor. You will notice that we have the stator on the outside, that's the part that does not move or is static, and we have the rotor on the inside, that's the part that rotates. Looking at the frame here, this is a cast iron frame. There are two types of motors. Generally, there's a rolled steel frame. That's the cheapest way to build a motor. You simply roll some plate steel around, weld it, and then stuff the innards in to create a motor. This is a full cast iron motor. A cast iron motor is cast in a mold, and you can tell it very quickly by the heat dissipation ribs on the outside of the motor. A rolled steel motor generally is called open drip proof, and generally the air goes right through the motor. Whereas this is a totally enclosed fan cooled motor, you can see that it's completely sealed. And although it can breathe, the air actually is pushed by this fan over the outside of the motor, keeping the internal clean, and it's cooled through these ribs on the outside of a motor. The main advantage of a cast iron motor is that it's very stiff and it keeps those bearings in alignment. Keeping the bearings in alignment is a very important part of longevity for a motor. Now there are two ways that motor fails. One is by failed insulation and the other is by failed bearings. Failed bearings is the number one reason for motor failure. So the first thing you want to do is use oversized bearings. Oversized bearings will mean that those bearings are running at a lower uh, amount than their full capacity. And then you want to protect them from contamination from things like shaft slingers and oil lip seals that you can see right here. Next, you want to get an oversized rotor. Now, how do you know what oversized means? Well, the best way to get an oversized rotor is to get a premium efficiency motor. When you get a premium efficiency motor, they have to add more iron and copper in here, and thus the motor runs cooler and is better for use with a variable frequency drive. The next thing you're going to want to do is get a rotor with skewed rotor bars. Now, this is the rotor, and you can see the red is the iron laminations. The silver is the edge of the rotor bars. In this case, aluminum, in some motors, copper. So you will notice that these are at a slant that's called skewed rotor bars. And in doing so, the skewed rotor bars cause this motor to have more starting torque, quieter operation, and run smoother. Now, the rotor bars are the part that conducts the electricity. The iron laminations are the part that conducts the magnetic flux. Next, we want to talk about a the temperature rise of the motor, and in this case, this is a class B rise, class F insulation. So pretty much all motors these days have class F insulation, but getting a class B rise as opposed to a class F rise will allow that motor to run cooler, and you may end up having to get a motor that's only 15 horsepower in this frame rather than a 20 horsepower if you do this, but it will run much cooler and cleaner. And finally, vacuum pressure impregnation uses vacuum to actually evacuate all the air 
before introducing the insulation into the windings and vacuum impregnation is the best way to get a motor that's very solid and high insulation. Finally, I want to talk about the insulation itself. Most motors are rated for 1,000 volts. VFD motors should be rated for 1,600 volts. VFDs put out sharp pulses, and many times they go over 1,000 volts. So you want to make sure that these have what's called high spike wire. And the high spike wire is rated for 1,600 volts and will assure that your windings have a very long life. Well, there you go. Now you're armed with all the information you need to make sure that the motor you select for your variable frequency drive is high quality and will give you years of reliable surface. Make sure you check us out on VFDs.com for our extensive inventory of variable frequency drives and accessories, or call one of our knowledgeable sales associates for more information.